Good morning, my name is Josh from Cyclone Flowers and welcome back to your detailed forecast update for Sunday, November 24th, 2024. We've got a lot to get through today. We've got some flooding concerns expected to unfold across central parts of New South Wales and into southeastern Queensland. A lot of rainfall expected along those locations. We'll give a tropical weather forecast as well with some substantial rainfall accumulations also expected up in the Northern Territory and parts of Western Australia. There's also a tropical low that could become a weak tropical cyclone sometime this weekend or into early next week offshore from Western Australia. So we'll dive into the details around that and I'll give a general weather forecast around other locations around Australia as well. So all of that plus more coming up in today's weather forecast. If you are brand new to the channel, please consider subscribing. The support lately has been much appreciated, but let's get stuck straight into things over in New South Wales, Victoria, South Australia and Queensland. We do have quite a lot, to, oh, quite a lot to get through in uh, this part of the video. So make sure you do pay close attention, especially if you do live in the north central parts of New South Wales, where you do have some flooding concerns expected to unfold. So let's get to that right now. You can see over the coming couple of days, we are expecting a few showers and storms here and there. Showers and storms expected tonight around the Broken Hill area, especially along the New South Wales and South Australia border and then the New South Wales and Victoria border. In fact, the rainfall almost traces out those two borders pretty much perfectly. A couple of thunderstorms expected the further north you get, but again, nothing crazy, nothing really worth writing home about either. A few storms expected both Monday and Tuesday nights. In fact, Tuesday night we could see a bit of a severe thunderstorm outbreak across parts of South Australia as a weak low pressure system deepens in the Great Australian Bight. And this one here, pay close attention, does bring some problems to areas areas around Victoria and New South Wales on Wednesday and into uh, Tasmania as well on Wednesday. We do have some heavy falls expected there. Uh, severe thunderstorms possible Wednesday morning and early afternoon across the western half of Victoria, bringing heavy rainfall, damaging winds and large hailstones, and then into Wednesday afternoon into the north central parts of Victoria around Albury and Shepherd, and we could be seeing a couple of severe thunderstorms there. And then showers and thunderstorms expected along the interior parts of New South Wales on Wednesday night, which leads us nicely into the rainfall, which will pipe up from Thursday uh, onwards into the interior parts of New South Wales and also parts of Queensland. So let's break that down for you right now. You can see along what's going to kind of extend through central parts of Australia is a trough line powered by a low pressure system that's going to pipe up around the southwestern corner of Queensland. We're going to have a bunch of moisture and rainfall get dragged into interior parts of New South Wales and Queensland and as such some substantial rainfall accumulations on Thursday afternoon from a few showers and thunderstorms tending to rain at times as possible but the real rainfall will pipe up on Friday especially into Friday afternoon with a few thunderstorms where we've got thunderstorms turning to rain the further north you get, especially around Moree and Lightning Ridge, we're going to have some moderate rainfall there, and then into south central parts of Queensland around Charleville and Roma, some showers turning to rainfall at times as well throughout the course of Friday. Uh, this rainfall could be moderate to heavy at times, especially into the northeast of New South Wales. Some heavier falls are possible there, and rainfall accumulations between 10 and 15 millimeters an hour sustained for six to 10 hours, uh, six to 12 hours rather at a time. You do the math on that, you're getting some pretty significant rainfall accumulations up towards 100 or 100. 20, maybe even more uh, millimetres just throughout Thursday, Friday, and then into Saturday, which is expected to be the real wet day, especially around Moree and Tamworth. There's going to be a lot of rainfall in this area. And what I will get to in just a second is the central Queensland coastline forecast as well. But yes, some substantial rainfall accumulations from moderate to heavy falls expected on Saturday morning, clearing out by Saturday afternoon into the northeast of New South Wales by Saturday evening. A couple of heavy showers expected Saturday evening and then into very early Sunday morning, and potentially a couple of severe thunderstorms here and there into the southeastern corner of Queensland, but again, nothing too crazy. And you might be able to tell if you watched yesterday's forecast update that the forecast, at least for the rainfall, has been backed off quite substantially by the Eastman Bear forecast model. And I think that is completely reasonable. I was raising doubts about 200 millimetres across interior parts of New South Wales, and it has been uh, since wiped from the forecast, which I think is a good move by the Eastman Bear forecast here. 200 millimetres at this time of the year. It is possible across interior parts of New South Wales, but it isn't totally uh, expected. It's quite unlikely and would be quite a rare occurrence, that's for sure. Um, in terms of the actual rainfall accumulations expected, especially uh, Thursday and Friday, which are expected to be the wet days, or Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, Saturday being the wet day, the further northeast you get, there will be accumulations widespread between 25 and 50 millimetres, especially kind of towards the east of a line uh, extending down from Cobar to Griffith, sort of this line here. Once it does turn from kind of desert into more sort of arid scrubland, you can see Burke expecting a pretty hit and miss 10 to 15 millimetres. That's a much more plausible number on the rainfall forecast now, but you can still see further inland out towards Lightning Ridge, Moree, Narabi, uh, Narabri, Inverell and Tamworth accumulations are in excess of 80 millimetres and in fact outside of Tamworth they're approaching or they're closer to 150 millimetres with accumulations between 100 and 150 millimetres totally possible at this time, especially with the rainfall that gets itself jammed up into the foothills on Saturday morning and into Saturday afternoon. Some good falls also expected into south central parts of Queensland. Charleville expecting between 50 and 80 millimetres, Tambo 50 to 80 millimetres 
centimeters and then some other locations relatively uh, lower amounts of rainfall between 20 and 60 millimeters but still all in all some pretty good falls expected and because the rainfall will be quite widespread and these will be showers tending to rain at times and it is looking like pretty healthy rainfall as well in the sense that it isn't downpours it's just going to be that kind of steady precipitation stuff it does look like a very good forecast for farmers unfortunately though the further out towards the, uh, the west you get the lighter the rainfall is going to be in locations towards the west of Burke and Coba I would expect hardly any rainfall when are unlikely to receive any rainfall same uh, with Wilcania very little rainfall expected definitely nothing out of towards Broken Hill from this weather event at least and up in Windora uh, in the southwestern corner of Queensland uh, the rainfall there is going to be very hit and miss as well but for locations further inland uh, further towards the coast rather still quite far inland some good rainfall certainly does look like it is on the cards now this is in stark contrast compared to the Access G3 model which is still calling for those substantial rainfall accumulations added on by a bit of more rainfall expected on Monday uh, by the Access G3 model here across uh, parts of New South Wales so some sub substantial falls are still possible in the forecast but they have been cut out of the main forecast here from the East Worth and the GFS also not expecting too much in the way of rainfall as well so this uh, forecast here that we've just gone through with the East Worth for rainfall into the northeast of New South Wales and the southern central parts of Queensland does look to be the most plausible one at this time again a lot of uncertainty still and we'll break it down further uh, in a future forecast update a lot of talk for New South Wales we're already very deep into the video so let's head up into the central coast of Queensland and talk about the rainfall that's expected there over the next 10 days because there is a substantial amount for some locations. And you can also see some good rainfall also expected to pipe up along the southeastern coast of Queensland. So I'm going to break that down for you right now uh, and we'll head further north as the video progresses or at least if this part of the video progresses. But you can see throughout the course of today and tomorrow nothing in the way of rainfall expected into the southeast of Queensland. A few light showers possible on Tuesday especially along the coast but they should be kept at bay and kept out of the Brisbane and the Gold Coast metro areas. A few showers tending to rain at times on Wednesday, especially around the mid-afternoon sort of time frame. Some showers also possible on Thursday, with the odd storm expected here and there the further inland out you get. A couple of severe thunderstorms possible around Charleville on Thursday afternoon and evening, but again, I don't think it'll be anything crazy out there. Friday, a couple more showers tending to rain at times as well into the southeastern corner of Queensland, and then sun uh, Saturday into Sunday morning, you can see some heavy falls expected as this low-pressure front uh, slash trough line moves through the southeast of Queensland, and then out to see some heavy rainfall, or at least a very heavy band of rainfall is possible late Saturday night into very early Sunday morning, with showers and rainfall at times lingering on a Sunday morning. And again, to open December, I feel like this might be a little bit more uh, more of a serious rainfall event than the forecast models are presenting here just with the Axis G3 calling for a copious amount of rainfall I'm just going to give the heads up here that Saturday night to early Sunday morning there is a chance of a very significant blowout in the rainfall accumulations and what I mean by that is well, the forecast suggests 20 millimeters or so but some locations just sit under a heavy band of showers for six hours and we see accumulations pipe up to be around 200 millimeters again it's happened a couple of times in the last couple of weeks into the southeast of Queensland so I would not be surprised if it happened again and just with the way Way this forecast is behaving and how the rainfall is moving on this forecast here I would not be surprised if that was the case so that's just the heads up for the southeast of Queensland some substantial rainfall is possible uh, quite a bit of rainfall is actually now on the cards and some good accumulations expected over the next 10 days in fact amounting up in excess of 150 millimeters for the Gold Coast in Cooling Gatta so some substantial falls there Maroochydore expecting about 100 millimeters Brisbane somewhere between 60 and 100 millimeters there uh, again it's going to be pretty hit and miss here and there along the uh, southeastern corner of Queensland a lot of places Places should pick up some good rainfall over the next 10 days but for some locations they will unfortunately completely miss out same deal with the Sunshine Coast some good follow-up rainfall for Agnes Water and Gladstone and Rockhampton as well especially with some falls expected Friday Saturday and Sunday some showers up there some good rainfall could uh, continue to uh, saturate the ground up there which would be great to see they do desperately need the rainfall there and they were really hanging on for some follow-up rainfall but it doesn't look like it's going to come uh, not in the fashion the dramatic fashion that people were hoping for but still a couple of millimeters up towards 50 over the next 10 days as possible. Rockhampton could see up towards 50 millimetres as well, same deal with Ogmore. And then further inland, depending on how thunderstorms behave on Friday, Saturday and Sunday, we could be seeing some very substantial rainfall accumulations out there. Again, this is from thunderstorms, so it is going to be a pretty hit and miss forecast, but in terms of the severe thunderstorm forecast on Friday, it looks like there's going to be a lot of them around in the north central parts of Queensland and then to the far northern parts of Queensland up into the Cape York Peninsula. We could be seeing some he very heavy rainfall totals outside of Mount Isa, uh, Maxwellton, uh, Huen 
Rwanda and then outside of Chartist Towns as well, then extending south towards Matabara and Longreach. Some heavy showers expected there, tending to thunderstorms or some severe thunderstorms at times. And like I said, the rainfall accumulations could completely blow out there. Still a lot of uncertainty because it is from thunderstorms, but yeah, between Friday night and Saturday night and even in towards early Sunday morning, some substantial rainfall accumulations are possible, which could push 10-day rainfall accumulations up in excess of 100 millimetres for a few locations, which would be fantastic to see. I mean, you can see Moranbar and Claremont just outside of those locations, the forecast suggesting up towards 250 millimetres. Of course, that's a bit of a bogus number and quite an excess uh, in terms of the forecast here, but in general, accumulations between 50 and 120 millimetres over the next 10 days across a lot of locations do look very plausible at this time. It's very hard to put an exact number on what's expected, though, just considering how far this is out. Still in the forecast period, it's still about five days away, and considering it is also from thunderstorms. A little bit more follow-up rainfall also expected for the far north of Queensland around the Townsville area and then up in towards the Casbury Coast, especially over the coming couple of days. I mean, we still do have some substantial rainfall accumulations piling themselves on up into the far north of Queensland. I think Innisfail's had a further 35 millimetres overnight, and some locations outside of it have had in excess of 60 millimetres with a few more showers expected throughout the course of today, but then some dry weather will take hold Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. And then, the, like I said, those showers and potentially severe thunderstorms on Friday do pipe up once again. They'll be mainly further inland, but you can still see a couple of drops of rainfall expected along the Atherton Tablelands. Much needed rainfall there, and I imagine, as I mentioned, that a lot of people watching got very excited. More showers and storms, pretty widespread, all things considered, across the far north of Queensland on Sunday, and same deal for Monday and also Tuesday as well. In fact, it looks like a bit of a rainfall event might pipe itself up into the early parts of next week. Certainly something that I'm going to keep an eye on, but yeah, just in terms of the, all the convective patterns happening along the Coral Sea, I'd not be surprised if sometime next Monday or Tuesday to open up December, a bit of rainfall did pipe itself up. That'd be very seasonal for this time of the year. In fact, the rainfall normally does pipe itself itself up in the first couple of days of December. So that would completely align with what historic trends in the current long range forecast was suggesting. And just before we talk about that tropical low slash cyclone, I would just like to touch on the Northern Territory in Western Australia. They do have some substantial storm days expected over the coming couple of days. You can see tomorrow afternoon, a lot of thunderstorms and showers expected across interior parts of the Northern Territory, extending up towards Darwin where some good drops of rainfall are expected there. Same deal with Tuesday as well. There could be severe thunderstorms around the Alice Springs area and then along the South Australia and the Queensland border of the Northern Territory into the southeastern corner of the state. Some substantial storms are possible there. Top end of WA, Kimberley region could get a couple of good storms on both Monday and Tuesday night and then into Arnhem Land as well. A couple of good storms expected both Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday and Friday nights. I mean, they're really widespread on Wednesday night. A lot of showers and storms expected up there. And then into Thursday night as well, a couple of good thunderstorms expected. They could actually be quite severe at times by the looks of things on Thursday. And then on Friday as well, another outbreak of thunderstorms expected before they do calm down a little bit on Saturday and Sunday. But I think the forecast model is just a little bit more uncertain with those forecasts as opposed to reluctant to produce thunderstorms. So yeah, five days of gnarly thunderstorms across the Northern Territory and Western Australia. It is going to feel like the wet season up there, warm in the day, humid, and then just that torrential rainfall in the night. And a lot of this rainfall here really does add up quite quickly over the coming just five days alone with accumulations around Elliot and Tennant Creek, as we've been talking about over the last couple of days, in excess of 150 millimetres. And if you cut the math down on that over the next five days, if they get 30 millimetres a night or 60 millimetres on two nights and then 30 or 40 millimetres on another, another night, then before you know it, just on three nights of rainfall they've got 150 millimeters for one certain location so again this forecast is completely plausible at this time it is a lot of rainfall even for the interior parts of the northern territory even for this time of the year as well typically this rainfall is more reserved for january or february but again this rainfall forecast completely plausible we knew it'd be a heavy start to the wet season in terms of rainfall for the northern territory and it is presenting itself in dramatic fashion over the next 10 days some good falls also expected into the early parts of uh next weekend and then into uh, monday and tuesday as well across arnhem land at the Northern Territory. It looks like the thunderstorms are going to become a little bit more confined there. And just having a look at the northwesterly winds here, it looks like that monsoon is going to burst sometime uh, towards next weekend and into early next week, which means it's going to be rainfall, 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 and guess what? More rainfall across the top parts of the Northern Territory and then into the Cape York Peninsula into early December. That's just my long-range guess at this time, but taking a look at these winds here, driving in a lot of rainfall off Indonesia, we're going to have a lot of rainfall to be talking about into the early parts of December. 
That basically does it in terms of a mainland Australia weather forecast. There's not an awful lot more to talk about across South Australia or parts of Western Australia. Otherwise, this video would go for about half an hour long. And I do wish, and I would like to just break this video up by saying that I wish I could talk about every single location in every single video or make multiple videos a day. Unfortunately, that it would just be too time consuming and uh, multiple vi up video uploads a day don't as perform as well, which means people will likely miss them buried in the YouTube algorithm. So unfortunately, that isn't a plausible scenario for me at this time. Hopefully someday in the future, but I just can't. Uh, this is the most efficient way and the most effective way for me to produce these video updates at this time. And unfortunately, it's not going to suit everyone's style, but it does work for the majority of people. I would just love to be able to produce multiple videos on every single weather event every single day. But I imagine that chat has bored you for long enough. So let's take a look at this tropical low here that's slowly spinning itself up offshore from Western Australia. And in fact, let's pull up a 12 hour loop of this system wrapping itself up. Its official designation is Invest 96S and it hasn't earned a tag or a designation or even a watch from the Bureau of Meteorology at this time, considering its vicinity to West Island as well, which is um, close to Australian waters, and I believe it's also an Australian territory, and winds there already gusting up towards 50 kilometers an hour, so it is starting to, it's definitely starting to feel the impacts of a developing tropical cyclone here. I would have thought the Bureau of Meteorology would be onto this, at least with a tropical low forecast for this system or a severe weather warning for West Island. All things granted, though, this is not a severe system and absolutely no threat to land whatsoever, and people up there will probably not even notice that there's something spinning up uh, just considering how weak this system is but over the coming couple of days it is expected to intensify at least briefly in fact we could see a bit of a brief uh, period of rapid intensification on Monday afternoon and into early Tuesday morning and you can see it here on the wind forecast expected to attain gale force winds not classifiable as a tropical cyclone but gale force winds do look possible sometime on Tuesday and into early Wednesday morning as it heads closer to the southwest Indian Ocean it really does struggle as a system as you can see on this forecast here even though it does become a tropical cyclone by definition by Friday and Saturday. It's well out of the Australian area of responsibility at this time and the forecast has actually been increased for its strength but at this time again it's nothing worth worrying about. It's just an interesting feature offshore from Western Australia. It looks like we're going to have to be waiting a couple more weeks at least for our first tropical cyclone of the Australian cyclone season 2024-25 which is all well and good. I mean the longer we can put them off in terms of land impacts for Queensland and WA the better uh, but I imagine a lot of people are getting pretty excited for tropical cyclone season. I myself are one. Uh, very excited to begin tracking some systems, especially if they do remain offshore. And I also imagine a couple of Queenslanders pretty excited to receive that first real rainfall and also the first couple of tropical cyclones that make their passage through the Cape York Peninsula. That's just how things roll up there. They get pretty excited for that kind of stuff. Anyways, that is all that I have time for today. It's been another long-winded forecast update. Hopefully it's not as much of a pain to edit and produce and whatnot as the yesterday's forecast update was. That was hell, I'm telling you. Our special shout out to the channel sponsors they make it all possible they do their names are on screen right now and their support is much appreciated so if you haven't already get your name on this list by clicking the join button and selecting the channel sponsor category uh, it gives you access to a lovely name badge in the comments section priority replies as well I mean I see it and it pops up on my phone with a notification so I'm always getting back to you as soon as I can and it is just a great way to support and get me access to some of this fancy software that I have here so it's a great list to get your name on if you haven't already but there's no pressure watching these videos is more than enough and I do thank you so much for doing that as well. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you all in the next storm. Goodbye.